It is time, time for part three of my 2016 Oklahoma Sooner football preview. We're going to talk about the schedule, break down the 12-game slate for the Sooners, and it's going to be at times demanding, especially at least a couple of times during the non-conference part of the season. Speaking of that, let's dive right in to September 3rd. If the Sooners need a memo for this game as far as their defense, hey, contain Greg Ward Jr., the terrific Houston QB, one of the best QBs in the country. He is a dual-threat quarterback, and he can give defenses fits, and Mike Stoops D's should know this because they've had the hardest time in the world trying to contain multi-dimensional quarterbacks, and Greg Ward Jr. is one of the best that they would have ever faced. Good news for the Sooner D, though, the proven talent that surrounded Greg Ward Jr. Um, a year ago, a lot of those guys are gone now. Um, so that might be a feather in the Sooners' cap right there, but they still have to contain Greg Ward Jr. On the other side, Houston's defense was opportunistic a year ago, forcing a lot of turnovers, but they were vulnerable at times too, especially when teams drove inside um, the Houston 20-yard line. Those teams were getting TDs more often than anything else. Very rarely was the field goals. So as long as the Sooners protect the ball, don't force anything that's uh, not there, and let the ground game do their part, I, I think the Sooners – should be able to handle Houston. It might take a while, but I think in the fourth quarter, P. Ryan and Mixon will be too much, and I think the Sooners will get out with a W. Home opener September the 10th against Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, I know, exciting stuff, right? So exciting with the games on pay-per-view. If there's anything to really look forward to in this game, it's going to be the stadium, because this will be OU's first home game since the renovation of the stadium, which really went into an effect during the offseason. It's not going to be completely ready, but the main parts of it will be. You'll notice that the south side of the end zone, you no longer have those uh, spaces in the corners in the southeast and southwest portion. Now they're occupied. It's now a bowl-shaped stadium officially, and that should obviously impact um, the game because it's going to mean higher noise volume. Okay, The noise will be more impactful. And of course, um, additional seating, which will make the stadium, uh, should make it um, at least 90,000 in capacity. But for this game, the big thing, obviously, is getting those reserves quality playing time in the second half. If not, then you know that OU got caught looking ahead to Ohio State. The Sooners should win this game comfortably. And, of course, getting ready for the big showdown on September 17th against those guys from Columbus, Ohio. Well, if you're a college football fan and you're not watching college football on September the 17th, what's wrong with you? Okay, if you have plans, if possible, postpone them. You can you can execute those plans on September 18th because the 17th is going to be one of the most appealing games of the year in college football between two programs, very rich in tradition, and of course have great fan support and have two coaches who will one day be in the Hall of Fame: Bob Stoops and Urban Meyer. They know what it's like to win national titles. Buckeyes coming to Norman September 17th, and I give Oklahoma the edge two reasons. Number one, home field advantage, but number two, I know Ohio State has an All-American at linebacker, and of course the multi-talented QB in JT Barrett, but the Buckeyes have to replace 16 starters, and to ask Ohio State to go into Norman uh, with only six full-time starters from the year before, that early into the season, that's asking to me just a little bit too much. I think it'll still be a good game, but I look for Baker Mayfield and company to find a way to get by the Buckeyes late. So I've got Oklahoma winning, but next year I get Ohio State favored to beat the Sooners because they'll rematch in Columbus in 2017. Seeing that the Sooners will play two out of three teams who are ranked in the top 13 to start 2016, I think a bye week for late September is in order. As a matter of fact, um, the Sooners make up for it in early October with the Big 12 opener in Fort Worth against arguably the second best team in the league in Texas Christian. That's right, TCU and head coach Gary Patterson, one of the best in the country. Keep in mind that since TCU joined the Big 12 back in 2012, the four meetings against these teams, the winning team, the margin of victory, seven points or less. That's right, seven points or less. All four of the games have been close, including last year, where the Sooners just got out with their lives winning by a single point. Got to be able to handle a uh, offense that definitely puts up points for the Horn Frogs. Of course, they've got some uh, losses to recover from, and you got to think the Sooners with that extra week of preparation are going to be able to handle the challenge of the Horn Frogs. Not to mention the fact they've already played two good teams in Houston and Ohio State. So I don't think OU is going uh, to be at all emotionally compromised to play this game. Yeah, there's Texas ahead, but I think Oklahoma. 
knowing how big this game is to get off to a great start in the Big 12, will come away victorious. Oh yeah, the second weekend in October. It must mean Texas State Fair time, Corn Dogs, and OU Texas. Oh yes, yeah, going to be fun with a capital F. Biggest question I've got for the Oklahoma Sooners, will they play with emotion? Will they play with heart? Will they get it right in between these right here, the ears, the brain? Because last three years, Texas has had the edges in all of those departments, okay? Oklahoma's the better team, but the better team doesn't always win. The team that plays the best wins and the team that gives a damn about the Red River rivalry wins. And that used to never be a problem for Oklahoma in the early 2000s to get ready to play Texas. But for the last three years, and both years that Charlie Strong's been there, Texas has played like the better team. The last three years they have in Texas has won uh, two of those games. It doesn't matter what Texas's record will be entering this game. They can be undefeated or they can have four losses like they did last year, and they still kicked Oklahoma's tail on that Cotton Bowl field. So I can tell you that Oklahoma will win this game, but it's got to be shown to me mentally that they're right for the game. A question that in the past would have never have come up under a Bob Stoops team. It is the Big 12 home opener for the Crimson and Cream, and they'll take on the team that has had success lately in Norman. That's right, Bob Stoops' old boss, Bill Snyder, will bring his K-State Wildcats into Norman on October the 15th. That's right, 2012 and 2014 were the last two times the Wildcats came into Norman, and both times they came away victorious. Even though Oklahoma was the better team both nights, K-State committed far fewer turnovers and came up with bigger plays. Now, that'll lead to a winning formula no matter if the game's at home or away. Well, last year, you might remember, this was the game that turned Oklahoma's season around, and not only did they beat Kansas State, they embarrassed the Wildcats, shutting them out and winning by more than 50 points. I'm not predicting the same thing for this year, but Oklahoma talent-wise is much more superior than those K-State teams that we saw in 2012 and 2014. Unless Kansas State has something offensively that we're not expecting, I look for the Sooners, and maybe a game that's not too high scoring because K-State's defense will be improved, but I still look for the Sooners to win by double digits. Texas Tech, October the 22nd, the South Plains, I'm sure, will give Baker Mayfield a big welcome. You don't think they haven't been waiting for this game? And OU fans, if you thought Texas Tech fans were annoying before, well, come October 22nd, you've seen nothing yet because it's going to be a little bit louder than normal in Lubbock, and it gets louder than Lubbock anyway, but it's going to be um, even crazier because this will be Baker Mayfield's first game at uh, AT&T Jones Stadium since he played for Texas Tech as a freshman just three years ago. So how Baker Mayfield handles his emotions, it will really dictate just how this game is going to go offensively for the Sooners, even though I think they'll play good no matter what. But if he emotionally is fine, there's not going to be any stopping Oklahoma on that particular day in Lubbock. I think defensively, um, OU will have their hands full because, after all, Tech is an offensive machine. But look for the Sooners to get some stops when they need to and look for Oklahoma to be able to run and pass all day or all evening, depending on when they play the game, and get out of Lubbock with a victory. October 29th, the Sooners will host Kansas. And are we kidding? There's no need to do a review on this game. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Let's let's go to the next one. Maybe it's just me, but I am not a fan of college football games on Thursday night. Okay, I know they're in prime time. I know it's a way to get college football fans warmed up before uh, the big slate of games on Saturday. But to me, that's when college football games are really meant to be played on Saturday. And I think college football is one of those few sports around that really tries to stick to its roots, its tradition. That's what makes it special. Thursday night games, I despise big time. Um, for the Sooners, they're going to be the road team uh, the opening Thursday of November against Iowa State, of course, who underwent a, a head coaching change. Um, unless the Sooners just flat out get caught looking ahead to Baylor, which is the game nine days from that one against Iowa State, um, unless Iowa State just plays the perfect game, I don't have a whole lot of reason, at least in late August, to be too concerned about the Cyclones against a road game. You know, the Cyclone fans are going to be fired up. Um, Sooners can do themselves a favor by making a big impact in the game early on, take the crowd out of the game, and establish a huge lead and you know, hopefully get reserves playing time in the second half, put away Iowa State, and, of course, after that, on the way back from Ames, then you can think about the Bears. 
Kansas State might have been the win for Oklahoma that turned things around. After all, they lost to Texas the week before. But it was the Baylor win last year in Waco that showed all of us, both Big 12-wise and nationwide, that Oklahoma can beat a high-caliber team on the road. And, of course, Oklahoma's ranking shut up like a bullet after that. And now you get the Bears and you get them in Norman. Of course, Baylor still has a good offense. They still have talent, but, of course, no longer have Art Browse, who was no doubt mainly responsible for the Bears' turnaround in the 2010s. Of course, the offseason, that was nightmarish in so many ways. And, of course, all that drama still isn't over yet in Waco. Uh, obviously, Baylor, not as talented as they were from the year before. I got to think the Sooners with a home field advantage and the fact that this is not going to quite be the same Baylor team from 2015. The Sooners should make it two in a row against the guys from Waco. It will be the final true road game for Oklahoma as they'll take on West Virginia in Morgantown. And who knows at that point in the season what the coaching situation will be status-wise for Dana Holgerson. Maybe the Mountaineers will be contending for the Big 12 and it won't even be a coaching situation. Or it could be like last year at this time with the team, you know, just barely getting by borderline around 500 and West Virginia might have to upset Oklahoma in order to have Holgerson keep his job. Who knows? Because it's been kind of just okay, but nothing really great for the Morgantown fans to cheer about for West Virginia. They've been just a little bit above average at that. West Virginia's offense, I think, will be pretty good, but the defense has a ton of talent to replace. I'll look for the Sooners in a game that, you know, don't be surprised if it's high scoring. I don't think it'll be 50 to 49 like it was, you know, a few years back. But I'll look for the Sooners with solid passing, of course, with the ground game as well, to have too much for West Virginia to handle. Sooners, Cowboys, Stoops, Gundy, Sooner Schooner, Pistol Pete, Boomer Sooner, Waving Wheat. Yeah, that's right. Stillwater, Norman. It's going to be a lot of fun at Gaylord Memorial. On December the 3rd, the final regular season game for both teams. And, of course, Bedlam uh, could really be important as far as the national scale for the college football playoff. Sooners will have so much on the line if things go the way I think they're going to go. Sooners will either be 11-0 or 10-1 entering Bedlam. And the big thing for the Sooners is defensively be ready for a passing attack because of Mason Rudolph, who proved his worth last season. And he also proved... Um, how valuable he is when he's not in the game, which he didn't play last year except for three plays, and he shouldn't have even played that many because of injury. But uh, if he's healthy, ready to go, look for Oklahoma State's offense to be difficult to stop through the air. Of course, their running game um, really lately has not shown that they can play on the same level as their passing attack. Defensively, some nice pieces for the Cowboys, but as a whole, they'll have some questions to answer. I look for Oklahoma's offense to have a nice game, and of course, the home field advantage invaluable in this one. I look for Oklahoma to win just as long as the Sooners in a close ball game do not punt inbounds with a minute to go. Finally, it is time for my prediction for the Oklahoma Sooners for 2016. To me, no doubt they are the most talented team in the Big 12, and the Baker Mayfield factor alone makes Oklahoma one of the best teams in the country. His abilities, his instincts, improvisation, and, of course, his emotion, which feeds off on his teammates, and they play better, too, because of that, and the ground game can do their part as well. Of course, missing Sterling Shepard is going to be a factor, and let's not kid ourselves, that will hurt to a degree, but I think, oh, you can recover from it. Biggest issue, of course, will be at linebacker with Jordan Evans, the only full-time starter back. Oh, you have to find a way and find a way quick to compensate for that. Secondary and defensive line will be in good hands, so that should help out the linebackers to a degree. I look for OU to go 11-1. Yeah, I'm picking them to lose a game. Why? Because it seems that as great as they've been over the years, there's always at least one game that bites Oklahoma, and it's usually a game you don't expect. Kind of like last year, well, against those guys there. And don't be surprised if that same team beats them again, even though Oklahoma will uh, probably be, be more talented. It's not always about talent. It's about giving a damn about winning a rivalry game. And for the last three years, Texas has had that fire that OU has lacked in the Red River shootout. And Texas beat them three years ago, beat them last year, and OU was lucky to have won two years ago. I do think OU will lose one game. I'll probably lean toward that one until the Sooners can prove that they want to win that game more than Texas. 
Despite that, though, I still think 11-1 with wins over Ohio State, Houston, and winning every Big 12 game except the one against Texas. I think the Sooners will have a strong enough resume to get into the college football playoff. How far do I think they'll go in the playoff? Find out on Tuesday, August the 30th, when I'll have my college football playoff prediction show. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.